Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's the CJ. Welcome back to episode 17 of the Innovator Marine 75 EXT refill, also known as the Be Easy Reef. The more I say it, the more I like the name of that for this tank because that's pretty much what I wanted this to represent. This tank was supposed to be easy for maintenance, easy for keeping, easy for just everything. Just my style of reefing and, you know, my style of setting this tank up in a way to where I can use it and keep it and just, you know, watch it grow out over the next few years, right? So the point of this video is just to kind of catch you guys up on everything that's happened over the last few weeks. Uh, the last video, we did a full review on the AI blade. So make sure you check that out. And if you haven't, you know, watched episodes one through 16, definitely go back through the playlist, get caught up. I walked you guys through every step up until this point plumbing, aquascaping, cycling the tank, you know, the fish quarantine process or observation process, you know, just adding the corals, literally every step of the way has been covered. All the good stuff, everything up until this point has been going well. And now we have our first issues in the reef tank. So you guys know my style. When it comes to issues on my tanks, I never hide it. I never, you know, try to skip over it. This is all for documentation for me, you know, for my hobby for my you know being able to look back and remember this happening on the tank and then also for anyone that's new to the hobby that may be curious you know how the hell did cj add 70 corals in the tank and you know not lose any or you know how's his livestock doing is cj gonna crash his tank or go too fast or any of that stuff let's find out together you know this is pretty much what the point of this hobby is for it's just you know you're gaining and growing and just learning in your own tank your own experiences and the great thing about youtube is being able to share it and hopefully you know educate you guys on what worked for me what didn't work for me not telling you how to do your tank but what i will do is share what i did with my tank so with all of that out of the way let's get to the point of this video uh we had a major issue with the tank uh, we had a issue with losing corals a mini tank crash so to speak and there's a few different reasons I feel like it happened, but I'm going to give you guys more details on all the steps I took up until this point to, you know, give you a full idea of what I did. So that way, you know, you're not thinking, hey, I just dumped coils in here without any thinking or thought process to it. Because really a lot of thought went into this and up until this point, you know, everything was working perfectly until I kind of pushed the pushed the pedal a little too fast on an algae fix that I probably could have avoided, but here we are. So let's get to it. So you guys may be curious. The tank's looking fantastic right now in this clip. This is older footage uh, when the corals were added, you know, for weeks. Great coloration, great polyp extension. You know, just honestly, no issues. 70 plus corals in the tank, minimal losses, minimal issues as far as anything, honestly. It was going so well that I really felt like I was going to be able to avoid making a video like this. So how did I do it? You know, how did I add all of these corals? Well, honestly, guys, it boils down to following the newer trend of the hobby, the newer information, if you want to call it that, uh, specifically the BRS, the biome series. It's something that I really gravitated to um, coming back to the hobby after a three year break, you know, focusing on building up your tank biome, meaning from the bacterial level, cycling your tank, biodiversity, you know, to adding copepods to your cleanup crew, you know, to equipping your tank to be able to handle any of the nuisance pest issues, uh, meaning cyanobacteria, you know, dinos, you know, algae, hair algae, all those kind of things. And for the most part, I was able to completely eliminate those issues. I haven't had any cyano, no dinos, any of that in this tank. But what I did end up with was going to be hair algae, which kind of started the whole issue that we're going to discuss in this video. But before we get too far, take a step back to the beginning of the cycle of the tank. Of course, I started it with the dry AF rock, and I also used the AF biomedia, which also had its own bacteria that was already seeded in that media. Now, when you combine that with established media that I end up picking up from Murphy's Aquatics from his system, you know, along with the live rock rubble that I added from the LFS, you know, picked out a few choice pieces that were in here, 
on the bottom of the bench, you know, kind of been in here a long time. I felt like I had a good basis for a biodiverse, you know, tank, at least naturally, meaning seated in the media, seated in the, you know, different things I've added. So that was the basis of the filtration for my tank. And then the next step was going to be to add more diversity through bacteria in a bottle. Now, the primary bacteria in a bottle that I've resorted to was going to be from Brightwell Aquatics. It's going to be the Microbacter 7. You guys are familiar with it. It's been in the hobby for, you know, longer than I've been back in the hobby, I would say. But it was definitely recommended to me by a lot of hobbyists. And for the most part, I felt like it was doing a great job you know, adding it at the beginning of the cycle and then adding it from that point forward, you know, weekly, just small doses here and there, just making sure that I had a good balance of bacteria in my system. So the next things I added was going to be amino acids, which also was from Brightwell, you know, the Restore, the Coral Amino. And then lastly, I added a different kind of bacteria, which I think was one I probably shouldn't have added. It was the Microbacter Clean, which is kind of designed to get into the cracks and crevices, to get into the, you know, cleaning your glass and just breaking down any detritus that may be in the system. And then, of course, we have the nutrients to be able to dose, you know, if needed. So we'll discuss that a little later. But I do want to make sure I kind of broke down the bacterial level of my biome. So the next phase I want to make sure I explain to you guys is going to be the crustacean level of my biome and my system. Meaning copepods, little critters, the little detritus eating, you know, algae eating bugs, you know, dino eating bugs you can put in your system. And I really attribute a lot of avoiding those cyano and dino issues to the focus I put on these copepods. Now, I end up sourcing them from Padre Reef and from Algae Barn, multiple, you know, shipments over the last few months. As you can see, four huge jars of pods were added to the tank this last batch. And I'm adding these monthly, you know, making sure you turn the lights out, the flow out, and adding them to the tank. And honestly, the better way of doing this, which I'm going to do next batch, is using a turkey baster, you know, and actually blowing them into the cracks and crevices of the rock. That's also a great way to introduce them to your tank. The goal is to make sure I have a big population able to handle, you know, any issues that may occur that they can fix, meaning algae, dinos and being a food supply, you know, for my pod eating fish. So after the pods, you know, move to the next level, going to be your hermits, your snails. This is one of multiple batches. It ended up being, you know, anytime I went to the LFS, I would grab five, six, seven, eight trochus snails, maybe a couple of Cyrus snails and, you know, a couple hermits. And up to this point, I have a pretty good population of all of those critters in the tank. So between the pod snails, that's going to be my algae eating. You know, as far as smaller things, and then as far as fish, you know, you got a couple of tangs and also some lawnmower blennies added to the system. By the way, I tried a trio of lawnmower blennies. Don't try it. Didn't work out. Ended up having to, re you know, return a couple of these guys. But you guys see the point, you know, focusing on the biome from the smallest level, from the bacteria to the copepods to the, you know, herbivorous fish, if you want to call it that. That's pretty much been the name of the game in my tank so after all is said and done you know the be easy buy home if you want to call it that you know was working pretty well until i started seeing issues with hair algae and the crazy part was you know i really didn't have in a nutrient overage at least as far as my test kits show but i was still getting algae. so i'm gonna attribute that to maybe overdosing too many aminos or too much you know phytoplankton whatever the case may be having lower nutrients in my tank Still did not stop algae growing in my display, you know, and also growing on my algae scrubber. It was really something that I was having an issue figuring out how to get control of. So instead of, you know, kind of starving the algae out and then also starving my corals out, I decided to go with the quick fix, meaning the reflux or the fluconazole. Now, this is something that's been around in the hobby, mixed reviews, some people saying, no issues in the tank some people you know lost corals whatever the case may be but i wanted to go for it because i was in a weird situation to where i had very low nutrients but i also had algae so i couldn't starve the algae because i would have starved all the corals so i just wanted to just get it out the way all at once 
you know, my nutrient export was definitely doing its job. Skimmer doing a great job, especially after plumbing it outside. You know, I was able to get some good thick skimmate, you know, increase my pH and all of that. Algae scrubber doing its job growing. So for the most part, everything was working except the hair algae issue that I had in the display. Now, throughout this process, you know, I dosed the fluconazole. And these next couple of clips are going to be covering a week's time as far as the changes on the tank. So as you guys will notice, you know, hair algae is in the tank. You kind of see it waving different places. Now, up until this point, the cleanup crew, the tanks, you know, the newly added algae blendings have done a little damage and cleared out a few different spots. But as you can tell, still plenty of waving algae all over the rockscape. And it was actually worse than this before I dosed the fluconazole. So, you know, the ultimate goal was just to knock all this algae out, have all the coils left, you know, looking beautiful, pristine rock. You know everything just working the way it's supposed to but as you guys can tell if you watch any of my earlier videos even the earlier clips in this video there's already a noticeable difference in the corals especially you know the lps corals not fully opening and then eventually you'll start noticing some issues as far as the sps now up until this point you know i didn't really suspect this would happen but you know around day two or three when I really start noticing, you know, the anemone shrinking up, the Duncan not really opening, you know, the LPS are still not really opening, you know, the ACANs not looking as happy, and then sadly, all of my SPS started stripping. So this is going to be the bad part of the update. I want to make sure I mention to you all, you know, in my research on fluconazole, especially after I started noticing issues. It's crazy how, you know, you have an issue and it makes you really start digging into it. But, you know, a lot of people mention no issues with fluconazole and then around, you know, 30% of the people that I came across also mentioned losing SPS, you know, 80, 90% of their acros in the tank. You know, was it related to the fluconazole, the chemical reaction it causes in your system doing it? Or, you know, was it because of the nutrient spike from you know the algae dying in the tank or maybe an alkalinity spike because of the coils being pissed off and you know stopping consuming along with dosing you know what is it that's causing it you know is it the tank age i've seen so many different examples of tanks that were new for this happening and also examples of tanks that were mature three four year old tanks that were maybe trying to treat biopsis and also losing sps coils so no, the crazy part was it was mainly the SPS core that were impacted, uh, the acros, the stylos, uh, the monopora, all of those were ones that literally just stripped down to the skeleton, bleached out, and I had to end up pulling them from the tank. Now, as far as the LPS, they got mad and didn't open. I never really had issues with heads dying or anything yet uh, at the point of this video. So after day seven or eight, it was time to finally abort the mission on the fluconazole treatment. Two reasons. First, you know, losing coils like crazy when it comes to SPS. Second reason, the algae was pretty much gone in the display. You know, that was the crazy part. You know, even though it was a negative impact, it also finally got rid of all that hair algae, meaning, you know, it didn't all just melt away, but it did weaken to the point where I was able to remove it. The cleanup crew was able to remove it, you know, algae blending was able to kind of get to it and basically the end result was a success when it comes to the algae in the system but the negative impact i just couldn't wait any longer so it was time to do a major water change on the tank so something else i want to mention we'll discuss it later in a different video it was a small change in salt switched from the aquaforce hybrid to the aquaforce reef salt um, that's something we'll have to break down in a future video but there's a time and a place for both, and I'll make sure I share that with you. So, mission has been aborted, and what was the outcome? Not a great one, guys. This is some of the boneyard, being the coils that I lost in the tank, and there's still probably a couple of coils that, honestly, I may end up having to pull, depending on if they're able to recover or if they continue with the RTN or, you know, the tissue kind of falling off of them. But I suspect I'm probably going to have 70 to 80, maybe 90% loss 
of all the aspects of the tank, not limited to acros, also including monopore and a few different things. So it kind of just makes you wonder what is the final, you know, blame for this? Is it because I didn't do something properly as far as maintaining my tank? You know, did my nutrients get too close to zero and, you know, cause the issue? Or was the fluconazole the ultimate factor in, you know, me losing a majority of my SPS cores? Me personally, it's easy to blame the last thing that was done, which was the fluconazole. That was the last change, you know, within two to three days of that, corals went up in smoke. Or was it nutrients not being in balance that weakened the SPS corals? You know, I did notice a couple of the SPS corals having diatoms growing on them. Maybe a couple. Every other coral had polyp extension, no issues. It's just hard to explain what would cause corals to all die at once, simultaneously, you know, same day, literally. So basically, at the end of the day, it's one of those situations to where I want to make a judgment, you know, without being um, thorough and not, you know, thinking about all the different things that could have caused it. But honestly, my gut's telling me it was the Conazol. So you guys can kind of let me know your experiences with it or anyone you've met or known to have used it. You know, what happened in their situation. Now, I will say there are two different options. The, the Reflux is the one I used. But I did find out later there was a Flux RX, I believe, is a pure version of a Fluconazole. Does the same thing that I guess has less bad results. But ultimately, guys, this was just me trying to do the quick fix. You know, basically dropping a nuke in my tank and having some friendly casualties, to say the least. You know, tons of money went up in smoke, you know, and the ultimate game plan for the tank being stocked and getting ready to kind of start trying to grow these coils out has kind of hit a major speed bump now is it the end of the tank absolutely not i still feel like uh you know the coils are left still plenty to build from and as far as the sps arch still plenty you know to replace and maybe move around whatever the case may be you guys know me i don't ever you know let an issue halt me in the hobby i always make sure i continue I always make sure that you know, I try to make my best move the next move, right? So I just want to make sure I share this experience with you all. For those that are wondering, you know, what is going on with CJ Stank? You know, what caused the mini crash? Well, hopefully this video gives you guys a clear understanding on my thought process on what's happened, you know, over the last few weeks, a couple months in the tank. And for the most part, you know, besides this issue, everything was pretty much going great so let's kind of go ahead and wrap this video up and i guess the question i have for you all is considering everything that has been done on this tank i at least tried my best to make sure that it was properly recycled you know that the foundations for the tank were done properly and the biggest mistake being maybe not managing my algae the correct way you know do you feel like this is something that could have been avoided. What would have been your method of handling it? You know, should I have done a bunch of Mexican turbo snails, you know, and just let this issue kind of fizzle itself out? You know, also considering that low nutrients in the tank did not stop the algae from growing out of control. You know, it's something I learned that algae, even low nutrients, won't prevent it from growing. And then on top of that, adding phytoplankton, you know, and amino acids for the corals had great results as far as the coloration of the corals. But you got to remember those things are not exclusive to helping your corals grow. They also help, you know, algaes grow in your tank. So, you know, I was, I was dancing the fine line of a low nutrient system and also, you know, the fine line of not starving my corals and keeping the colors up. So, you know, this is a different level of the hobby. I've never tried before. I've always been a very simple, you know, water change guy. Never really dosing any kind of bacteria or aminos or, you know, any of those things. Uh, historically, all of my tanks usually had super high nutrients. So, you know, it's just something that, you know, a lesson learned, to say the least. And 
it kind of motivates me to go back to my normal style of being in the hobby water changes and keeping things a little simpler so once again we're gonna go ahead and get this video wrapped up just some food for thought interested in you guys comments and questions but as always hey you guys can like comment subscribe you guys keep doing what y'all do y'all be easy and happy reading. peace Thank you.